Hello everyone, this is Dr. Ritika Gaba, your PhD coach, mentor and guide. And I'm here to empower you all with genuine, in-depth and well-researched knowledge. This is the second time or the second video in which we are going to discuss the changes brought about by the draft PhD regulations of 2022. In the first part of this video, we had discussed with you all what is the role of UGC in PhD? What do these PhD regulations do? What are its function and what is its meaning? And how does it impact the students and the universities? We had also discussed three major changes with you all. Change related to the minimum duration of pursuing a PhD. Change related to the eligibility criteria of a PhD aspirant. And the third change which we had discussed was related to reserving seats for net qualified PhD aspirants. In this video, in this current video, we are going to discuss with you all all the changes that have been proposed in the draft PhD guidelines of 2022 related to the admission process, the PhD admission process. Whatever changes have been introduced in the PhD admission process all that is going to be discussed in this video. So let us start with the first change. A change which is going to come as a relief for both the universities and the students. So this change relates to the syllabus of the PhD entrance examination. Till now, that is the two, till the 2016 regulation had mentioned that the PhD entrance examination needs to be conducted on two papers or two subjects. Paper one should be related to your general aptitude. It should be testing a student's general aptitude, general ability and paper two would be one which would test a student's subject specific knowledge. So paper one would be common for all the students across streams. And paper two would obviously depend on the PhD subject in which the student has applied for. Now, if in case a university was conducting a single examination, then they would be putting 50% questions from paper one, 50% questions from paper two. Something very, very similar to your UGC net examination syllabus. However, in the new regulation, UGC has said that the universities now only have to take the test based on or the PhD entrance examination would only be based on your paper one or the testing the general aptitude of a student in order to judge their reading ability, their comprehension ability, reasoning, analytics and similar skills. So this is a good news. Now, now universities don't have to prepare multiple papers for different subjects and the students have to focus getting prepared only for one examination. Okay, from here we move on to a second important change. A change which is not, would not be very exciting for certain students. Now, till now, whatever exemptions were given to the UGC net qualified candidate, the same exemptions were being extended to gate qualified, sled qualified candidates as well. In the 2016 regulation, it was mentioned that the admission process of net gate qualified candidate can be decided by the universities. And believe me, students, since we have gone through, reviewed the admission process of more than 1000 universities, we can tell you for sure that if a university decide, decided to exempt a UGC net qualified candidate, they also exempted a gate qualified candidate. However, in the UGC 2022 regulation, it has not been mentioned anything about gate or sled qualified candidate. This clearly shows that UGC is trying to encourage more and more students from different streams to appear for UGC net or CSIR net. When we talk about UGC net, we are automatically talking about both these examinations. However, the problem is that most of the engineering and technical students like your architectural student, pharmacy students, usually are more comfortable giving GATE simply because of the number of subjects in which GATE is offered. 
even though UGC net can be give it, given in your either in your post graduation subject or in any other related subject, somehow still the technical students found it a little easier to go for GATE. Anyways, however, we do hope and pray that as uh, with this change, UGC is also planning to increase the scope of UGC net uh, subjects and is going to bring in more technical subjects so as to make it easier for our technical engineering architectural students to appear for this examination. On this positive note, we move on to our third point. A uh, change which is going to bring in uniformity and more transparency in the entire admission process. Till now, that is in 2016 regulation, there was nothing mentioned about what would be the weightage of a viva or a written examination and therefore every university had their own norms. Some would say that, you know, a written examination has more importance, some would say that viva has more importance. For all those students who do not understand what a viva is, after you give your, in the admission process, after you've given your PhD entrance examination, you also have to appear for a PhD viva in front of your research committee, in which you would be discussing your proposed research. Even the UGC net qualified candidates or in, even the JRF qualified candidates also have to appear for this viva. They might be exempted from the written examination, but nobody is exempted from the VIVA. Now in the new regulations, UGC has said that has fixed weightage for the VIVA and the written examination to the tune of 70% weightage being given to the written examination score and 30% weightage being given to your VIVA. So obviously this means now all the universities and educational institutions would be following the same process, same criteria of selecting and find, calculating the final scores of the student. Thus bringing in more uniformity, transparency and clarity for the students. Now we move on to our fourth point. Separate merit list for the UGC net 60% candidate and for the PhD entrance examination 40% candidate. So we had already told you this in our first video that UGC has said in the new regulation that 60% of the total PhD seats have to be reserved, reserved for the UGC net qualified candidates. So supposing a university has 100 seats, so automatically they have to fill 60 of these seats through PhD aspirants who are net qualified and the 40 remaining seats can be filled through their PhD entrance examination. Now UGC has further in order to ensure that this is being followed to the T by all the universities has said that separate merit list will have to be prepared by, UG, by the universities to show the 60% candidates separate merit list would be there and 40% candidates separate merit list would be there. This obviously shows that UGC is extremely keen on bringing in more net qualified candidate to the PhD stream. Of course, this is great news for the students who, for the PhD aspirants who've already qualified UGC net. And it is a big motivator for all the other students to qualify this prestigious exam as soon as possible. With this, we come to the end of all the changes brought about in the new draft PhD regulations in the admission process. However, there are many other changes relates to, related to the academic bank of credit, leave during your PhD, MPhil, what do the guides have to do? the coursework and so on and we would be discussing all these changes in our next that is the third part of this video if you are liking the way we are empowering you with knowledge then please do subscribe to our channel and tell us what you like or what else do you want to know we really want to know your opinion so please leave some comments on our videos this is dr ritika gaba from Zenith PhD Training and Consultancy, a consultancy which is here to empower you with knowledge. Have a great day.